a most momentous event, the sudden death on March 29, 1981, of Prime Minister Eric Williams, who had steered the country since the beginning of party government 25 years ago. The Twin Island State has at its head a president since 1977 when it became a republic. The new Prime Minister George Chambers arrives at Whitehall to cabinet meeting with his ministers. camera legislature and a Westminster style parliament of both government and opposition. The late Prime Minister had presented a five billion dollar budget for the fiscal year 1981. And yet guarantee a stable economy for the future generation. The other things that have to be done. First, the government must accelerate its own program in the development of its hydrocarbon resources. More oil and more gas will mean a healthier economy and a stronger foundation for the future. I leave that for my colleagues to develop in the course of the budget debate. Trinidad's petroleum resources continue to dominate the economy, with the major proportion of crude being produced by marine wells. Amoco is by far the largest producer here, with Trinidad Northern Areas, Trinidad Tesoro, Texaco, and Trinidad and Tobago oil company Trintoc being lesser producers. The search for oil began in Trinidad in 1857, making our petroleum industry one of the oldest in the world. In 1866, oil was discovered and commercial production began in the early 1900s. Today, though a relatively small producer, Trinidad and Tobago exports as crude oil or refined products roughly 95% of local production. This makes it third, after Mexico and Venezuela, of the six net exporters of petroleum and derivatives in Latin America. Within recent years, several discoveries of natural gas have been made off the coast, and reserves of this resource have been put conservatively at 12 trillion cubic feet. With these natural resources and bold planning of its government, Trinidad and Tobago has been referred to as becoming the first industrialized nation of the Caribbean. Iscot, the country's iron and steel company, is the major thrust of the gas-using industries centralized at Point Lesus. The natural harbor on this west coast site is the main attraction. Iscot is wholly owned by government and the entire plant is now fully operational. Nationals are largely employed. The melt shop is equipped with two electric arc furnaces and two four-strand continuous billet casting machines and has a capacity of 700,000 tons of high quality billets. The estimated total natural gas requirement for Iscot is about one million cubic meters per day. <laughs> The rolling mill is a two-strand rod mill capable of producing annually over 550,000 tons of wire rods. 
coil weights of 1,500 and 2,000 kilograms are being produced to satisfy marketing conditions. The Point Lisas Industrial Port Development Company, Flip Deco, provides the infrastructure and facilities necessary for the establishment of large process industries using high volumes of gas and electricity. This industrial development, which can only be described as rapid, has resulted in some strain being placed on the public utilities of the two islands where the quality of life, especially in the urban areas, has been said to compare favorably with that of more developed countries. But development of these utilities has not been forgotten. The water supply development program will yield by 1986 another 159 million gallons of water per day to the 100 million gallons per day now being used. A new 60 million gallons per day water treatment plant has been completed and an additional 50 miles of transmission mains laid together with booster pumping stations and service reservoirs. The new generating plant at Point Lesus will not only meet the needs of the industrial complex there but will also supplement the supply to the rest of the national system. A submarine cable gives Tobago its supply, but two independent diesel generating units have been also installed. 15 to 20 containers an hour can now be handled at the country's container terminal, Berth 6A, and a master plan is being prepared for port redevelopment throughout the country. Our national airline flies to major cities and our Earth satellite station connects us with the world. Trinidad and Tobago is served by two radio stations with both AM and FM channels, a commercial television station and two daily newspapers. Roads and highways transform the landscape. Taxis move thousands daily in a mobile population. The telephone service is on the upgrade. But both public and private housing projects lag way behind the country's housing needs. Our manufacturing sector, which has developed considerably over the last 20 years, deliberately promoted by government through the Industrial Development Corporation and other such organizations, will grow and diversify even further as it responds to the needs of the new energy-based projects. In recent years, special consideration has been given to the small businessmen. The vessel, the Gelting, makes its inaugural six-hour trip to Tobago.